Hello and welcome. Before you watch this video, pause it and try the problem on your own. Okay, so this is an exponential decay problem. And we can tell it's a decay problem right away because we're dealing with the breakdown of a sample of a chemical compound. And it's represented by this function, p of t equals 300 times 0 0.5 to the t power, where p of t represents the number of milligrams of the substance, and t represents the time in years. In the function, explain what 0.5 and 300 represent. So I'm going to move this down for a second. Okay. So let's just go over what they told us. They told us that p of t is a function. It, it represents uh, the milligrams of the substance, milligrams of the chemical substance, um, as a function of time, right? So basically, the amount that remains after a given amount of time is calculated by this equation right here. And t, of course, t, and this t as well, both represent the time that has passed in years. They tell us that, right? It's in years. You don't know, you don't know if t is necessarily minutes or whatever or seconds. Um, they'll specify that. So what do 0.5 and 300 represent? Well, let's take a look at that, and we can actually understand it uh, by plugging in values for t. So if we start with p of 1, after 1, well, sorry, what am I doing? Start with 0. 0 is a great place to start with these kind of functions to see what's happening. So we get 300 times 0 0.5 to the 0 power. Now what's really important here is to understand what the 0 power represents. Anything to the 0 power, except for 0, which is a special case, anything to the 0 power is 1. So 300 times 0 0.5 to the 0, well 0 0.5 to the 0 is just 1. So that exponent applies just to this piece right here, not to the 300, but that's just 1, which is 300. So what does that tell me? Well we said at, at 0 years, right? In other words, at the start of uh, this timeline, there is 300 milligrams of this substance, right? Because p of 0, they told us p of 0 is the uh, milligrams of the chemical as a function of time. So this tells us the milligrams of the chemical at 0 time, in other words, when no time has passed, is 300. So we might want to put those units in here. This is 300 milligrams of the substance here, right? 300 milligrams. So what does 300 tell us? That essentially tells us the starting measurement, the starting volume of the chemical compound. So 300 milligrams is the starting volume. That's what it starts at. Now what happens over time after that? Well, what happens after one year? Well, we have 300 times 0 0.5 uh, to the first power which is 300 times one half, right? Because any of the first power, the first power is itself. So it's half of 300. That's 150. Let's do a couple more to understand what the 0.5 really represents. So after two years, we have 300 times 0 0.5 squared. Now we could calculate 0 0.5 squared, but I think it's nice to expand it and write 300 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 and then think about what that means, uh, or what that value is. So let me calculate that really quickly. So 300 times a half, and then we don't need a calculator, of course, because we're just having twice, but I just grabbed it. So it's 75, right? So it's a half of 300, and then that half right here, cut in half again. So let me just label that. So it's half of a half. That's basically what we have here. We have 75. Right now, let's do one more to really make sense of this. So we have 300 after three years equals 0.5 to the third power. And again, we can calculate 0.5 to the third, but let's just look at it. It's 300 being halved and halved and halved again. And what does that equal? Well, it's going to be half of 75, which is 37.5. So what's happening here? Well, 0.5, right? Each case is representing the number of times that the substance is, is being halved. In other words, it, it represents the rate of decay, we call it. So if, um, if, it was, if it was a different number, 
right? Instead of being cut in half each time, let's say it was 0.2 or 0.1, it would be, be cutting down by a different percentage each time. This just tells us that this chemical uses loses half of its volume, right, each year. That's what the half represents. So you can tell you have a, a decay function if this number right here is less than 1. If it's less than 1, you're going to lose value each year. So the 0.5 is called the rate of decay. And it's just the rate at which your chemical, in this case, is breaking down for a given amount of time. All right, hope this helped.